Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing a fragrance you've probably heard me talk about quite frequently and I thought maybe I should review it since I talk about it all the time. And it's from Mason Francis Kirk John and it's Oud Cashmere Mood. <laughs> So my goal is to actually review every single fragrance I have in my collection. I want to do that. That is like a goal I've set out for myself. And it's a pretty lofty goal because my collection is constantly growing and I initially have a lot. Some of them are old, some people might not care for reviews, and a lot of them are newer editions of newer fragrances that people might really care about. But nonetheless, I want to review all of them. So I was thinking about what I wanted to do today. It was either going to be review or I was going to talk about my layering video. Um, and I think I'm going to do that tomorrow. So if you guys have been interested in my layering tips and tricks for fragrances and also recommendations, um, definitely check the video out tomorrow. It's going to be pretty good. I've been working on it for a while. Um, but I decided I wanted to give it another day or two while I do a little bit more research on it. And I figured I would review this because I've just been talking about it so much and I feel like it's about time I did. So if you guys are unfamiliar, this is um, Mason Francis Kirk John. It's a niche brand, very luxurious house, and he has a lot of fragrances. They range from very bright, floral, masculine, um, and his oud range is very popular. Now there's velvet, silk, satin, cashmere, and then just traditional oud. Um, but I'm going to be reviewing cashmere but I'm also going to be kind of giving you guys the difference between each of them as well because I am in the future going to be buying all of them because I really enjoy them so let's get into the first review. and foremost let's get into the notes it's Loish Oud Moroccan Labdanum um, Benzoin and Vanilla now this is one of the fragrances that I find you either love it or you can't be around it it's very polarizing because Although you get the strong oud, and the oud is very strong in all of these fragrances, this one specifically kind of has that burnt match smell. It's very, very like fire, <laughs> fire, campfire-esque. Burning wood is what I get from this, and I love it for that. If you guys have watched any of my videos where I talk about this, I love the smell of burning wood, which is why this one spoke to me on a special level. But if you don't like burning wood, this is not the one for you. And I'm specifically talking about burning wood, not wood notes. The vanilla in this sweetens it up just a little bit, kind of mellows everything out. But this is just a beautiful fragrance, especially if you're looking for something very warm and very appropriate. I find this to be very appropriate for fall and winter. Um, and I, whenever it gets a little bit cold and cold in Florida, it's like 75 degrees, I rush to wear this fragrance. It's really just one of my absolute favorites. But again, if you don't like the burning wood notes or the campfire notes, um, I would definitely steer clear of this. But I wanted to get into this fragrance, specifically because people hear those notes and they get turned off. But the thing is, is this is just a beautifully crafted fragrance. Overall, if you really like wood notes and you're looking for something that's a signature scent worthy, I definitely think this could be it. Just because of how easy it is to wear and unique it is, but it definitely it has an impact. Um, and I'm going to say that it's not because of the burning wood, but I think the oud mixed with vanilla is something that I don't see very often. And mostly I see rose and oud and then spice. And I love that combination. But the vanilla in here and the absence of rose I think is really wonderful. Uh, just because I have so many rose oud fragrances and I love rose oud fragrances. But sometimes it's nice to have something a little bit different. And this is definitely one of those fragrances that is different. Again, it has that burnt match, burnt wood, campfire-esque smell, and that is very strong and very potent. But because of that fragrance, and uh, because of that smell, and because of the memories I have um, associated with it, I love this fragrance. But I also wanted to get into the quality of the juice, the longevity, and the sillage, because that's part of the review. Overall, the longevity on this fragrance is fan freaking tastic It's at least six hours on my skin and the sillage on this is pretty incredible as well. I find a good amount of Francis Kirk John's fragrances from Mason Francis Kirk John to have at least 
a nice sillage, arm's length sillage. Um, this one particularly projects very loudly. Now, I am an oversprayer, which means I will take showers and baths in my perfume. However, this one I absolutely cannot. Two spritzes at the most is plenty. And if I put too much on of this, it gets a little too strong for me. Um, but overall, this has wonderful longevity, beautiful sillage, and if you love those woody, burnt match kind of woody notes, then this is definitely something I would recommend. But a lot of people ask, what's the differences between the silk mood and the velvet mood and the satin mood and the cashmere mood? And I'm going to talk about those really quickly now. A little list of notes down here with all of the fragrances. So let's get into the one that I find to be the most popular, which is the satin, which is the amber rose and violet with oud. And those are the predominant notes that I get out of it. A lot of people really like this one because it's got a beautiful mix of masculine and feminine. You get the strong oud and all of these fragrances. Oud is what I pick up the most, but the rose kind of sweetens it just a little bit and softens it and the amber warms it up and it's really, really nice. Um, and that's probably going to be my next purchase from, from this line because I do really enjoy it. Next up is Silk. Silk is a rose and chamomile. This is a little bit, a little bit more herbal notes to it, which is kind of weird, <laughs> um, but not in a bad way. Um, you get the rose and you get the oud. It's pretty powerful, but after it's been on the skin about say, 20 minutes, you start to get like the chamomile and some herbal notes to it. It's a little tiny, itsy bitsy bit botanical. I think that it's kind of more refreshing. Um, for an oud rose fragrance, if that makes any sense. I think it's really, really nice. I really like silk. Um, and you can blend or layer, layer silk and satin, and that's really beautiful too, because the rose is there in all of it, and the oud is there, and then you get the beautiful mix of the violet and the amber and the chamomile, and it's really, really nice. The last one I wanted to talk about is a little bit different than the others, and it is velvet. This is cinnamon saffron, and it's like this balmy, kind of, it's different. You know, there's no rose in it, so you're not going to get the rose oud, but you get the spice and the oud, and then you get these, like, balmy afternotes after it's been on your skin for about half an hour to, like, 45 minutes, um, which is really, really nice. What I love about all of these fragrances is that to their core, they are oud fragrances, like, to their core, but they each have something a little bit different and unique. I'd say the safest one, if you were going to go out and get one that would probably be more universal, and I'm just making sure I'm saying the right one, definitely be the satin. Um, and the one that's going to be a little bit more risque would actually, to me, be either the velvet or the cashmere, because it is a little bit different because of the notes. Again, more balmy. This is more burnt house um, or burnt wood campfire, burnt matches, things like that. But if those are the scents that you like and those are the scents that you're drawn to, then those are the ones you're going to be super excited for, which is why I'm super excited about it. Overall, these is a fantastic, these all are fantastic fragrances. I'm obviously, you know, I'm a huge fan, but this is a fantastic fragrance, but I kind of wanted to get into the notes and definitely compare it to the others. I definitely don't think this is something you should buy blind. I don't. I usually don't say you should buy blind, but there are some very safe fragrances out there that are beautiful that you could probably get away with buying blind. This is not one of them. Absolutely not. No. <laughs> you need to experience this before you just, and you need to experience this on your skin. This isn't something I would spritz on a test strip. This is something I would wear and see if you like it. Because the notes are so powerful, because they're very strong, this could be something that you either love or this could be something that could give you a headache. So although this is a fragrance that I absolutely am obsessed with, this is not something I would just recommend to just blindly purchase. Now satin, maybe. Silk, maybe. Velvet, eh. But this one, definitely not. Um, but it is a beautiful fragrance and I do love it very much. So overall, I think this fragrance is A+. Plus. I will definitely purchase this if I ever run out. But since I said I wear this when it's cold and I use only two spritzes, this will probably be one I have forever. But I do generally love these fragrances and I'm also really excited to add more from this line to my collection. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to give this video a thumbs up. Let's me to continue doing videos like this, and also don't forget to subscribe, because it's free, and I'm free, and 
I put out new videos every Monday through Friday, and sometimes on the weekends as well. So I always have something for you to watch. In any case, I hope you guys are all happy and healthy and have a great day, month, year, whatever. And I'll see you next time.